this financial success of the past 20 years, stemming from oil drilling and exports, is looking to establish itself in the Red Sea and Horn of Africa for geostrategic purposes. In a move symbolic of the post-Cold War world order, the UAE has begun a program of military installation and commercial port building across the region in an attempt to expand its influence. In the short term, the UAE's moves in the Red Sea have been based on its involvement in the war in Yemen. However, the extent and nature of these moves have experts speculating that the state is entrenching itself for the long haul, and arguably this is the case. In the long term, the UAE's main goal in the Red Sea and Horn of Africa is leverage. By building military installations and controlling many of the region's strategic ports, the state is positioning itself to control military and trade flows in an area which is expected to undergo rapid economic growth in the next century. A sensible investment perhaps on the part of the Gulf state, which is currently heavily reliant on its vast but limited oil wealth. Moreover, the UAE's military and commercial moves in the Red Sea come amid its wider attempts to influence East Africa for its own security. With 90% of the state's food supply imported, Emirati-based companies have been active in buying up agricultural land in East African states to protect the country from volatile commodity prices. If successful in building leverage, the UAE could be securing its own economic future in a world looking to move away from fossil fuels for environmental and security reasons. With trade volume expected to pick up hugely in the region going forward into the 21st century, the UAE's efforts in the region will most likely bear fruits if sustainable. Furthermore, by establishing a military presence in the Red Sea and the Horn of Africa, the UAE is able to build leverage to counter those states which are adversarial in the Gulf itself and other geopolitical theatres. The United Arab Emirates took part in the Saudi Arabian-led intervention in the Yemeni civil war, starting in March 2015 as part of a coalition of nine countries. The UAE's role in the Yemen intervention was critical, with the country playing a large role in military operations there aimed at opposing Houthi forces. As part of its campaigns in Yemen, the UAE established bases of operations in locations across the country. However, as of the state's part withdrawal in 2019, many of these have been closed or handed over to the Yemeni authorities. That said, the UAE has retained many of its bases in key geostrategic locations across Yemen, with the most important being situated in the cities of Mocha and Mukalla. Following its liberation of the city from Al-Qaeda in 2016, the United Arab Emirates maintains a joint base in Mukalla with the United States. Currently, the purpose of this base is counter-terrorism operations. However, its location on Yemen's Gulf of Aden coast could prove geostrategically important were the UAE to continue operations there after the conclusion of the conflict in Yemen. In addition to its counter-terrorism operations in the area, the UAE has made efforts to normalize the situation in Mukalla by restoring basic services, rebuilding the local economy and restoring operations in the port. Situated on the Bab El Mandeb Strait, Mocha is another geostrategically important port city the UAE is involved in. This important port city is located at the closest point on the Arabian Peninsula to Africa and currently provides the UAE with a maritime base from which it can patrol the Bab El Mandeb Strait. Similar to Mukalla, the UAE's presence in Mocha affords it geostrategic leverage and the state presently uses the base to police the supply of weapons to Houthi rebels in Yemen. Again, were the UAE to keep its base in Mocha after a hypothetical end to the war in Yemen, then it would be in an unparalleled position from which it could control flows through the Bab El Mandeb Strait. The UAE's involvement in the geostrategically important Socotra archipelago has faced intense scrutiny. In April 2018, UAE and Saudi troops landed on Socotra Island without the prior coordination of the Yemeni government, taking control of its air and sea ports, despite the presence of no Houthi forces on the island. The UAE was accused of building two military sites on the island, however, the extent of construction is unclear. The takeover of the island by the UAE has largely been seen as a strategic move on the part of Abu Dhabi, though the state has delivered aid and invested in infrastructure there. The situation on Socotra is still ongoing, with the Yemeni government accusing the UAE of backing separatist forces on the island, and three regiments of the Yemeni army reportedly mutinying against the government and pledging allegiance to the United Arab Emirates. If the UAE can establish control of Socotra or retain military influence there, it will be poised to exert further kinetic military leverage over the Gulf of Aden. Finally, the UAE has also expressed interest in reviving a deal which would see its Dubai Ports World Port Operations Company operate the Port of Aden. This deal between the two states was previously cancelled due to contract issues in 2012. 
Were the UAE to take control of the running of the ports of Mukalla, Mocha and Aden, it would have incredibly significant leverage over Yemen. Just as equally, a resurgent Yemen could remove the Emirati presence in the country and assert itself as a Red Sea power in its own right. It is said that the UAE has control over several non-state armed groups in Yemen that are thought to total around 90,000 fighters across the liberated territories, which it supports by providing direct training, capacity building, logistics assistance and salaries. The UAE's influence on these groups will in turn allow it to influence the domestic situation in the state, generating leverage there. If the UAE is able to keep a tight grip on Yemen, it will be able to keep its strategic posture in the country, furthering its interests in the Gulf of Aden and Red Sea, and generating yet more leverage. Alongside Yemen, the UAE is looking to develop its presence in the breakaway territory of Somaliland. Though not recognised by any other UN state, the de facto Republic of Somaliland does have relations with other countries, including the UAE. The UAE's main inroads into Somaliland have been at the port city of Berbera, with rapidly growing Ethiopia currently conducting most of its trade through the port of Djibouti, nearby Berbera provides a feasible alternative through which it can diversify the flow of imports and exports. Seeing the potential of the port of Berbera, the UAE previously made strong efforts to woo the Somaliland government with its large supply of capital, resulting in a $442 million deal in 2016 with the UAE's DP World to redevelop the port into a regional trading hub. This deal would see the UAE gain a 51% stake in the port through DP World, followed by the Somaliland government at 30% and Ethiopia at 19%. In addition to redeveloping the seaport, the UAE also previously signed a deal in 2017 to build a military airport to patrol the Bab el-Mandeb Strait. However, this agreement was cancelled in 2019, with the airport to become the city's second civilian airport instead. In 2017, the semi-autonomous region of Puntland in northeastern Somalia signed a 30-year concession agreement with the Dubai Ports World-owned P&O Ports firm to develop and manage a multi-purpose port in Bosaso City. According to Quartz Africa, the development of Bosaso Seaport will take place in two phases and is expected to cost $336 million. Emirati companies are also expected to take up work in the realms of infrastructure in order to maximise the region's connectivity with Indian Ocean commerce flows. All of these geopolitical developments in Puntland come at the behest of the central government in Mogadishu, which has banned DP World from operating in the country as a whole. The UAE has also played a role in training security operators for anti-militant and anti-piracy operations in the area. However, this deal was cancelled after an outcry from the central government in Mogadishu. By securing influence in Somaliland, and most importantly, its geostrategically located ports, the UAE is able to generate further leverage in the Gulf of Aden and East Africa as a whole. The asymmetric nature of the economic relationship between the UAE and Somaliland, as well as the Puntland and Somalia, will give the UAE a large degree of influence. However, the location of both ports is hotly sought after geopolitical real estate by other major powers such as Russia, which has signed an agreement to set up a military base in Berbera after the cancellation of the deal with the UAE, giving Somaliland more room to manoeuvre with larger, more capital-rich states. Moreover, with Emirati rival Turkey increasing its involvement in Somalia on the side of the central government and aiding the state in creating a sustainable military and security force, the UAE's interests in the defiant northern region of Somalia could be at risk from a seizure of control from Mogadishu. The UAE's role in Djibouti is interesting to say the least. In 2006, DP World secured a 30-year deal with the Djibouti government to build a port and container terminal just off the coast of Djibouti city at Dorala. After nine years of operation, in 2018, the port was nationalised by the Djiboutian government which claimed that DP World was running the port at an artificially low capacity in order to maintain capacity at its Dubai port. Following this nationalisation, 25% of the port concession was sold to China which had opened up an adjacent base in 2017. In the wake of these events, the UAE took the dispute to the London International Court of Arbitration where it was ruled that the nationalisation was illegal. However, despite the ruling, Djibouti has since refused to give DP World its 33% stake in the port back. By losing its stake in the Dorola port, the UAE lost influence in the key Horn African and Red Sea state and thus leverage in the wider region. Prior to the loss of the port of Dorola, Emirati and Saudi Arabian troops were evicted from their joint military facility in Djibouti in May 2015, following a diplomatic dispute. However, this loss was quickly overcome when Abu Dhabi turned its attention northward. 
After its diplomatic fallout with Djibouti, the UAE set its sights on neighbouring Eritrea, another geostrategically located state on the Red Sea coast and Bab el Mandeb Strait. So far, most likely because of the asymmetric nature of their economic relationship, the UAE has been incredibly successful at getting Eritrea on side. Largely due to its involvement in the Yemeni civil war, the UAE has focused on developing a strong military presence in Eritrea, though experts speculate that the state may be entrenching itself militarily for the long term due to the nature of its commitments and the extent of the military infrastructure it has built there. Effectively, the Yemeni civil war and Gulf crisis have served to bring Eritrea in from the cold of its previous isolation. Assab has become a hub for UAE military operations in the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden and Yemen. The strategically located port city continues to play a major role in Emirati moves in the region, hosting a military airport and naval base as part of a 30-year bilateral agreement. In return for hosting the Saudi and Emirati militaries, Eritrea's Asmara International Airport will be modernised, much needed new infrastructure projects will be undertaken and fuel supplies to the country increased. Being described as a powerful expeditionary base, Asab has become the first and major Emirati power projection site outside of the state's own territory. Going forward into the 21st century, where trade flows through the Bab el-Mandeb and Red Sea are expected to increase massively, Asab will afford the UAE major military and commercial leverage in the region, which in turn can be converted into leverage on a global scale due to the critical geostrategic nature of the area. Were any conflict to occur between the UAE and another state, the UAE's infrastructure at Asab would play a decisive role and could give the UAE the ability to close the Bab el-Mandeb Strait completely. Alongside its military presence in Asab, the UAE, through DP World, is also involved in developing the commercial ports of the city, giving Abu Dhabi more commercial leverage over Eritrea and East Africa as a whole. With landlocked Ethiopia set to become an economic titan of East Africa, the country is looking to diversify trade flows to prevent over-reliance on one port, namely Djibouti. Seeing this, the UAE has sensed an opportunity, and DP World has already become involved in developing the port of Massawa. Having significant influence at Massawa affords the UAE even more leverage over regional and international trade flows, particularly those in rapidly growing East Africa. If relations between Abu Dhabi and Asmara continue on their current trajectory, then more Emirati involvement in Massawa can be expected. Whether it is welcome or not, the United Arab Emirates is positioning itself to become a key player in the Red Sea and Horn of Africa, and the state's continually growing economic and military presence in the region may play a decisive role in developments there. As mentioned prior, trade flows through the Red Sea and Bab el-Mandeb are expected to grow extensively. Moreover, the rise and rise of Ethiopia as an East African economic titan will mean increasing trade flows and increased demand on ports across the area, giving the UAE and closely connected DP world further geostrategic and geoeconomic leverage. Finally, using its huge oil wealth, the UAE can be expected to increase its use of private military companies to further its interests in the region. Regardless of the UAE or any outside